We're still talking about that Atlanta area cosmetic surgeon who has now been served with at least six different lawsuits from patients who say they got botched jobs with side effects ranging from burns to brain damage. And all while videos begin surfacing of the dance parties that allegedly went on in her operating room with semi-naked patients on the table. Some of the pictures you're seeing right now, a lawyer for several of the patients says these are Dr. Wendell Boutte, who is still practicing. My panel is still with me. And O.J. Liebert, I want you to just react to me. Um, knowing that your, your mother is in, a, in an excruciating state, uh, she is going to need care for the rest of her life. The description has been that she has been severely brain damaged after going in for some Botox a few weeks before her wedding. Can you tell me, O.J., when you first saw your mother after the procedure, how did she appear to you? Well, my mother was in the emergency room and her face was very bloated and her tongue was sticking out. And um, I remember just seeing oxygen mask on her, um, on her face and whatnot. And um, basically, I saw her just trying to fight for her life and whatnot. And she, she just, it was very sad because her eyes were rolling back and, and I couldn't believe that was my mother because she looked so helpless. And you are now caring for your mother, am I, uh, am I correct? And in that regard, um, what are you having to do just so that your mother can get through a day? I have to prepare her meals, I have to give her medication, I have to help her in the bathroom, I have to bathe her, brush her teeth, everything that you would personally do independently on your own. So that's exactly what I have to do. Did you know about these videos of, of um, Dr. Boutte, uh, as your lawyer says, on YouTube, dancing and singing and rapping in the OR during surgeries? Did you know about that um, prior to your mom going in or even at the time your mom uh, was, you know, becoming so incredibly ill? Yeah, I was the one that actually found the videos and saved them. I was Googling her a lot because I was trying to figure out who is this woman and um, I, 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 I had needed answers for myself and when I came across the videos I was completely shocked to know that she was dancing and having so much fun while people were sleeping unconscious and, and just getting that done. And so I was shocked and I had to send that to my lawyer so that she can, you know, have them. So, Susan, you're his lawyer, and you are now in possession of these videos. Uh, you are launching uh, yet another lawsuit that this doctor is going to be facing. Um, and, and this has been in the news. This has been a local news story in <laughs> yes. your region, and that has had an effect on people coming out of the woodwork. What's happened in the last 48 hours? In the last 48 hours, I have been contacted either by phone or voicemail or messages over social media by no less than 30 patients who have been um, allegedly injured by Dr. Boutte or has suffered um, extreme results resulting in um, hospitalization, infection. What's very concerning to me is that many of these patients uh, appear to have been injured in 2017, which is long after um, Miss Cornelius had suffered her injuries in February of 2016, and the board was put on notice in March of 2016. So that we have a number of people who were injured in 2017 is concerning as to why the board did not take any action uh, in 2016 that would have prevented further patients from being injured. Well, I'm curious still about so many aspects of the story, one of them being how someone who has a you know, state medical records saying that she's only board certified in dermatology, not in surgery, as she says in her bio online. Is there some kind of a loophole in state law that allows you to be, say, a podiatrist who performs brain surgery or, say, a dermatologist who does tummy tucks? Is there something that allows you? Because I'll tell you something, there are a lot of different kinds of journalists. Right. But I want to know that my doctor, who is a specialist with feet, is not the doctor working on my head. Is it not illegal to do so? 
Well, unfortunately, the chairman of our Georgia Composite Medical Board has said anybody who's got a license to practice medicine can basically do any area of medicine that they would like to. Um, there are not sufficient regulations in place in the state of Georgia that regulates what physicians can do within the scope of their practice. And there is a loophole that allows physicians like Dr. Boutte and others to do these per, uh, procedures in their office that is not regulated and is not, there's no oversight because they're allowed to do it under office-based anesthesia instead of doing it in a hospital or in an ambulatory surgical center where there would have been the safety precautions in place to prevent a scenario such as this. So, Dr. Weintraub, you're a, a plastic surgeon in New York. Is that, I mean, that's the story. You just heard Susan talking about, um, uh, you know, Georgia. Is that the story here? Is that the story all over the country? Who the hell is policing this? Okay, so let me try to set this out for you. There's a difference between medical malpractice, which goes right to reasonable and customary practice in your community. Okay. What one does as a plastic surgeon or a dermatologist has to be within those guidelines or a person can get sued. Okay. That is different from the Office of Professional Medical Conduct. Yeah, aren't those the people who should say professional medical conduct doesn't include rapping, singing, and cutting at the same time? Absolutely. Because that board or that body holds our licensure. Conduct means conduct around a patient. But conduct this, in the operatory. Is this slipping through the cracks? Look at this conduct in the operatory. Look at this. Is this slipping through the cracks or is there some reasonable explanation that the Office of Professional Medical Conduct in Georgia could ascribe to this video and say, you know, it doesn't rise to the level of taking her license? I just can't imagine it from the clips you've shown me. Um, Does it need to be on national TV before they wake up? Or what, ha what, is the, what is the protocol here? There's a problem there. Uh, I know in New York State, issues of this nature, again in the videos you've shown me, would be a very, very egregious thing. And what you have here are both issues. You have med mal issues and Office of Professional conduct. Medical Conduct sure. issues. Yeah. One results in a lawsuit, the other one results in retraction of your licensure. Now, Susan said something very important. And the, here's the loophole. You can go to medical school and do an internship and put out a shingle that you're a neurosurgeon in the United States of America. The problem is that you'll never get hospital privileges as a neurosurgeon, so you can't open someone's head, you do for it in example. Your office. However, mm -hmm. if someone opens up an office, and says I'm a neurosurgeon and they're crazy enough to go into a private office even with an And make a nice looking shingle. Which, which brings me to Darren Cavanoke. And Darren, uh, wow, so many legal issues here. But how about this one? Cutting into someone while singing and dancing on video. How is that not negligence? How is that not the kind of negligence that could actually you know, land criminal charges on someone's head? Well, we've heard from the doctors that when it comes to negligence, which is a civil lawsuit, really the touchstone there is reasonableness. And so ultimately it will be up to a jury, uh, if the case isn't settled, to decide whether what was done was, was reasonable. Um, it, it, and it's so fascinating to me because if this was something that was staged, if she had created these YouTube videos as an innovative way to promote her practice, but it wasn't involving actual patients, it was just a funny skid, a parody that was done in the operating room, I, I would actually have no objection to that. The, the problem is when you put live people on the table, and especially if they're live people who uh, argue, I mean, I don't know, did they give consent to be featured in these videos? I, I would have a hard time imagining that they did. Uh, so there's a host of issues from the medical board to civil lawsuits to potential criminal liability. Uh, this is something that needs to get addressed post haste. Okay, and I think that's a huge point that you bring up. Was this staged or was this a real, um, you know, was this a real operation in progress? And it's a great point. And it's not the last point we're going to make on this. This is so disturbing that we're going to have a whole lot more of this, uh, the dancing surgeon story at the top of the hour. And also tomorrow morning on Morning Express. Um, so, again, about 28 minutes or so, we've got another whole area and two other people who went into that OR and wait until you see how they came out. They're gonna join us again at the top of the hour. In the meantime, it has been 10 days 